Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine. In this video, we are going to be talking about Object Oriented Programming, or OOP. OOP is a programming model that's based upon the concepts of objects and data rather than actions and logic. Essentially, everything we see in real life is in fact an object, if you think of, you know, plants, paper, chairs, tables, lamps, all of these different things, they can be represented in code using class blueprints that are defined by their attributes and behavior. So let's take a look at an example of this. First, we are going to create a class blueprint of an object without thinking about the code. Let's say we wanted to create a game where you pop balloons with a spike as they come down the screen. What are the objects in that game? Well, we'll definitely need a balloon, and we're also going to need a spike. These objects are going to be made from class blueprints, and so we'll need a balloon blueprint that defines everything we need to keep track of for the balloon, and same with the spike. And so we're going to start off with building the balloon class, or the balloon blueprint. And for a class, it's made up of two things. You're going to have attributes and behavior. And attributes are just data pieces we want to keep track of throughout the game. And so in this case, if we're going to have balloons moving around on the screen, we are going to want to keep track of an X position as well as a Y position for each balloon that we create, each balloon instance that we create. Um, and for the X position that's like right or left or Y is up and down. We'll also want to keep track of a color. Maybe, you know, the balloons have different colors in the game we want to create, that sort of thing. Um, and then we also might want to keep track of if that balloon is popped by the spike. And so balloons are falling down the screen. You have this spike, you know, that's your player, that's your controller. You're trying to pop these balloons. And so we want to keep, you know, track of if they have been popped. And then we'll also give each balloon an ID because we're going to have a bunch of balloons on the screen. And so we'll want to keep track of them with an ID. And so those are all of like the data pieces we want to keep track of for each individual balloon. There, each balloon will have you know, different values for each of these items, each of, each of these attributes. We also want to define the behavior. And so what do we want these balloons to be able to do? We want them to be able to move on the screen and we want them to be able to change colors. And so from red to blue or to orange, maybe that's another thing or another functionality in our game. So let's go ahead and write move balloon as a functionality we want to have and its inputs are going to be the number of x spaces and y spaces we want to move the balloon and so we want to move it you know to the right five spaces and then down two spaces that would be what those inputs are and then another behavior we want to have is to be able to change the balloon's color so change color and then we'll input the new color that we want the balloon to change to. So this is essentially the blueprint for our balloon class. This is what balloons consist of. They consist of an X position, a Y position, a color, an ID, and if it's popped, those that's what a balloon consists of. And then this is how it can interact with other objects or with itself. That's how you can modify the balloon, that sort of thing. This defines what a balloon is for our game. We can always add more functionality, more behavior, and then we can also add more data pieces as well. Moving on to our spike, we're gonna go ahead and define some attributes. In this case, we're gonna have an X position as well. And we're also going to have a Y position. And we are going to initialize this Y position to zero and we're gonna make it constant because we don't want it to change. And basically that means that we want the spike to only move horizontally or right and left on the screen. Since the balloons are gonna come down and maybe they'll move right and left, we want the spike to stay horizontal and only be able to, not be able to move up in order to pop the balloons. Um, so those are our attributes and then behavior. How is the spike gonna interact with the other objects in the game? we are going to go ahead and say it's able to pop a balloon and so we'll have our input 
as balloon, the name of our function or the behavior we're going to give it is pop. And then we're also going to give it the behavior of moving horizontally. And we are going to give it the input spaces. And so this will be the number of spaces that you want to move right or left. So if five's the input, we'll move five spaces right. If negative five is the input, we'll move five spaces left. Now in code, these attributes are actually called fields. And these behaviors here, they're called methods. And so a class is made up of fields and methods in Java. However, keep in mind, this is just a blueprint. So we haven't created anything yet. We don't have any balloons and we don't have any spikes. We can build instances and objects based on these class blueprints. The blueprint is simply a template for what an object will have in code. In this case, you know, the spike, it's gonna have an X and Y position. We'll be able to move it horizontally and pop other balloons. That's all defined by these spike and balloon classes. And I'll write class here um, so we know that this is the spike class. Now, let's try creating some example balloons based on the blueprint we see here for the balloon class. And so to create some example balloons, we will we'll go ahead and draw a line here. And that will separate what my classes are, my blueprints are, from what I'm actually building. And so in this case, I'm going to create a balloon. And this is going to be balloon one. And the attributes I'm going to give it, or the data I'm going to give it, is I'm going to say the x position is going to be 75. And then I'll write in the rest here. So here we have two balloons. It's a little cramped and I'm sorry, but it's a lot. Um, we have two balloon instances or two balloon objects we built from the balloon class here. And so we have balloon one has the X position 75, Y position 49, color is blue, is popped is false, ID is one. All of these fields, all of these attributes it has were defined in the balloon class but their actual values are not given until we actually create a balloon. And in this case, we created our first balloon. The second balloon here has the same attributes as our first balloon, but it has different values for each of those attributes or each of those fields. And so the ID here is two, the X position is 30, the Y position is 110, the color is pink and is popped is false. These two balloons also have access to the move balloon function as well as the change color function because these are both behaviors of the balloon class. They're instance methods as we call them because they're called by the instances balloon2 and balloon1. We'll go more into that later. It's important to remember that balloon1 and balloon2 are completely independent of each other. So if I change the X position of balloon one, it will not affect a balloon two and vice versa. These instances of the balloon class are created again from that class blueprint. Now, what makes this object oriented? Here, everything we see belongs to an object in code. The is popped field belongs to balloon two, balloon one, and it's ultimately defined in that balloon blueprint, meaning it belongs to every instance of the balloon class. The pop balloon method belongs to every spike instance because it's defined in the spike class blueprint. Our pseudocode here is organized around these objects and data rather than the actions and logic themselves. But what does this look like in actual code? So here we are in the code. This is what our balloon blueprint looks like in a Java program. And so before we kind of did some pseudocode, wrote it up, and this is what it looks like for real in code. We have this public class blueprint, our balloon blueprint, our balloon class. And inside of it, we have our attributes and we have our behavior. We have our fields and we have our methods. Our attributes are these data points here. These are things that we want to keep track of in our code. We have the X position, Y position, color is popped and end ID. Then we go ahead on line 10. This is our constructor. If you want to know more about constructors, this is basically how we create instances from the class. And so the blueprint 
it doesn't really do anything. It's just how you might create a balloon and how a balloon might be defined. But when you create that instance, now it's a living thing. Um, so if you're interested in constructors, I can do a video on it. Leave a comment down below. Um, and then also inside of this balloon class, we have behavior. And so the move balloon function, the move balloon method, the change color method, these are the behaviors that are defined in our balloon class. We can also add more functionality as we see fit and continue to build up this class, build up this blueprint, so that way our balloon instances are more powerful and they have more functionality. We also have a spike blueprint, our spike class that we were talking about earlier. It also has fields and methods. And so here we have an exposition, that's a data point. We wanna keep track of it as we create our spikes. And then we also have this constant, the Y position, um, which will always stay at zero, or it'll always stay at this horizontal plane um, where the spike will be moved right and left on. Then on line five, we have our constructor. This is how we make spikes. That's how, you know, when we wanna create a spike, what is everything gonna be initialized to? I uh, can make a video on that if you're interested. Then we have our two behaviors, you know, we have pop balloon, which is, you know, spikes pop balloons, and then the fact we can move the spike. And so you kind of see these curly brackets here. If we wanted to implement these functions, we could, or if we wanted to implement these behaviors, we could, but we're not really focusing on that in this video, just the idea that you can have classes, each class has the attributes, it has the behavior, that's how we can represent objects and code. And it's really the building blocks of how we're gonna create programs. With our classes in place, we can go ahead and move over to the main class. And this is really just where we're gonna build everything. This is where we're gonna build our balloons and our spikes and all the different things we wanna create. Right now, we only have the blueprints. They're just how do you make something or what, you know, what do you wanna make? But now we're gonna build some stuff. And so in this case, we're gonna build the balloons that we wrote out before on the whiteboard. Um, and so we had balloon one and balloon two. And so I'm actually gonna call them balloon, um, balloon A and balloon B, but it's essentially like the same thing. And here I'm just writing out the fact that this variable is gonna be of type balloon. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create that balloon, initialize that balloon using the constructor. Um, and in this case, we're starting off that first balloon with position X 75, position Y 49. The color is going to be color.blue. And that's using some imported Java functionality to get that actual color blue. And then we're going to say is popped as false. That's already taken care of by our constructor because we always want the new balloons we create. We don't want them to pop yet. And then we are going to give the ID 1. We're gonna create our second balloon here. This is gonna be balloon B. It's gonna be a new balloon as well. And we're gonna have that X position 30, that Y position 110. The color is gonna be pink, like we wrote um, in our blueprint. And then the ID is gonna be two. And so here we have, and I'll hit enter here so we can see all these values on one page. But essentially, we've created two instances of the balloon blueprint. We have our instance balloon A and we have our instance balloon B. These are variable names that reference the two balloon instances that we just created. So let's go ahead and mess around with these. If we go balloon A dot move balloon, let's say we want to move it you know, 20 spaces and 89 spaces, and so 20 spaces right and then 89 spaces up. If that's the way we're gonna make our axes where, you know, up is positive, down is negative, to the right is positive, to the left is negative. Um, and then from there, we can go ahead and print out each of our balloons X and Y values. And so if we go balloon A, X position, and the reason we're gonna do this is so you can see that these balloons, um, balloon A and balloon B, are in fact independent of each other. And so just because I move one balloon, that's not gonna move the other one. And so I'm gonna write these out here. And essentially here, I'm accessing the balloon A, balloon B's 
attributes. I'm accessing their data that was defined in their class. The value wasn't given until we created the balloon, but its attribute is still accessible. And so here when I go dot, I'm accessing the value of the exposition attribute or the exposition field. And we're gonna basically do the same thing, but we're gonna also move the B balloon. And in this case, we'll have 21 and negative 30. So we can see some differences there. And then print out the positions again. And so we have an extra one of those curly brackets, which is why we were getting some errors. And then I'm gonna go back to make sure this move balloon is implemented and so in this case we are implemented because the X position you know we add the X spaces we want to do and then we add the Y spaces we want to do to each of those attributes and if this implementation is a little confusing I'm gonna do a video on the this keyword like this whole thing like what is this you will find out um, but let's go ahead and run this and so I'm gonna right click on the main class. We'll go ahead and run it. And you'll see that just because I move balloon A, that doesn't move balloon B. They don't affect each other. So if I change the values of the attributes for balloon A, it doesn't affect balloon B. And if I change the attributes for balloon B, it doesn't affect balloon A. And so I'm going to add like a little space in here. So we're a little spaced out. And so here we have, we print out balloon A's X and Y position. In this case, we moved the balloon A's position from 75 to 95. We incremented it 20 spaces, and so that looks good. And then we also incremented the 49 by 89, which makes it 138 down there in the console for balloon A's Y position. And balloon B, its X position and Y position were not affected by the fact that we moved balloon A. And then scrolling down, we see balloon A. It's, you know, X and Y position are not affected by the fact we move balloon B. But balloon B's values are affected because we, in fact, moved that balloon 21 spaces. Um, so like 30 plus 21 equals 51. And then 110 minus 30 is 80. And those are reflected here in the console. So essentially, the spike in balloon, these classes are our blueprints. And from those blueprints, we were able to create these instances, balloon A, balloon B, and that's how we're able to interact with objects and code. Again, our code was designed around objects and their data, not actions or logic. And that's what makes it object oriented. Now, object oriented programming comes with its own set of four pillars that define object oriented design. And so it's abstraction, inheritance, encapsulation, and polymorphism. In short, this is what these pillars mean. Abstraction allows us to hide specific details of an object and use an interface for others to interact with it. With inheritance, objects can inherit fields and methods from other objects. Encapsulation allows us to specify access qualifications for certain data, and polymorphism allows an object to take many different forms. We've only scratched the surface of object-oriented programming and design. So if you're interested in more videos that go deeper into this concept, be sure to leave a comment down below. I hope you learned something new in this video and be sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss out on more technical tutorials. Thanks for watching.